too tiring for you, but if it was, we're here to give you something a little bit more energetic, a little bit more lively. We got the special feature, the Dan Desk here today. I am Daniil, also known as Better Smicky, joined by the one and only, the beloved all-timer. Go ahead, introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Mr. Danners, producer here at Sinclair College for the varsity sports teams here, and we have ourselves quite an exciting day ahead of us here. A double header of Rocket League action. Going to start things off with Academy as well, which is always exciting, considering I think it's the first time we've had Academy anything on stream so like far it. this semester. And it's not that we don't love Academy. Of course, we absolutely do, but broadcast team only has so much bandwidth. But with a match like the one we have today, it should be an absolute banger. Yeah, very excited. We always love to see NACE Varsity Plus on the dock today. And speaking of on the dock, we have the Academy team on our dock on the stage, getting ready, prepared. Hopefully they are as excited as I am for the upcoming game. And why wouldn't they be? They are playing in one of the best, strongest, most competitive leagues for Rocket League in the collegiate space out there. And they also have their chance to shine on the stream today. Definitely our first time seeing the uh, Academy team on stream. Not entirely sure if we've seen any of the Academy teams at all. It feels like, it, like we said, we don't really get much of a chance doing our best getting them on the side streams and such, but I'm always a fan of Academy. It's where I started, of course, so got to show them some love all the time. No, absolutely. And the match at hand, of course, here for today is actually going to be against another Academy team. But again, it's not going to mean that it's going to be any slouch of a match. George Mason University Academy Rocket uh -oh. League is who we are up against. And of course, George Mason University is a team that we seem to find ourselves up against pretty consistently throughout the semester in multiple esports titles. And for this instance in particular, George Mason University Academy squad is currently 3-0, and if I do recall correctly. Tied for first place with oh, LCU. Okay. <laughs> And Saints are right behind them. Technically third, but <laughs> technically with the underdogs by just barely, but mm -hmm. with a record this close. I mean, I know the record does not say anything. Just watch our, uh, like, varsity's teams perform anything. If it's an even record, it usually means that we're out of here with a quick 2-0 and a handshake. But yeah. uh, <laughs> we'll have to see because uh, I'm looking forward to this one nonetheless. And you'll notice we may even have a couple of familiar faces on yeah. this roster. Yeah, the uh, Academy roster always shining and always having some unexpected faces show up. But in any case, uh, I know this team is going to be working really hard to show what their stuff. And you mentioned GMU. Mm. And I, you know, just hearing that name, get a little bit of flashback seeing their logo seeing their team in any esport is always a, sh a sight to behold you know teams shiver in fear and for good reason teams are usually afraid of the saints team you know again also for good reason but gmu is one of those schools i feel like you don't really appreciate how scary they are until mm -hmm. you've seen them in a best of five in overwatch and you're down 2-2 and you're on the last flash point you're like okay well Things are getting real right now, and uh, I've, I've witnessed similar situations, and uh, I think that this game should be no exception in terms of excitement, nail biters, and I really want to see what the Academy team has up in store for us. With GMU in particular, yeah, they're definitely scary for me, because the one thing that I'm always remembering them for is going into, like, infinity overtime on a Friday night <laughs> Counter-Strike match, going, like, 19 to 20 and so on and so forth, back and forth. Was with that our, last year? I think it was last year. I think year I remember where, that one too. <laughs> or Vega Transit, uh, Transit Windsor is like, wait for us, this match is still going. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as 12 o'clock rolls around. But um, no, like, like I said, it's not necessarily one of those first teams to think of mm -hmm. when you think of like a really, really tough squad. But Without a doubt, we've seen them enough times to know that you can't sleep on this squad. And our Academy team definitely going to have their hands full. If I'm looking at this correctly, you could have Kipper, you could have Spoods, we mm. could have uh, Fatal and Jonas as well. Currently, I think his tag is showing up as uh, NA's last hope. <laughs> so we'll have to see how... Uh, how this one goes, this one not sure exactly 100% which mixture of three we're going to get, but it doesn't sound like we're going to have to wait too long to figure out. So we're going to hop on in to game number one here, because it is going to be Ben, so sure enough, that is going to be, as we formerly knew, as Spoods with Fatal and True. Yeah, and we're going to be seeing them get off to a strong start. TRU True trying to hold control of the ball with Fatal not too far behind. The George Mason Cad, they are getting aggressive here, pushing through and getting the 
first oh, boy. goal. Saints weren't able to really adapt to the offensive force that was coming through. And that's going to be a quick one, 20 seconds into this game. And we're already seeing what this team is capable of. Absolutely. Right off the kickoff, they are on their way. But let's see. Still got plenty of time here in game number one. As this, of course, did just really get started here. I'm not sure if it's just us or if it is um, everybody at home. But we do notice a little bit of stuttering. If that is on our end, we will take a quick look as soon as possible to get that all fixed up. But we are going to see. It's going to be true to make the save. It's going actually right over to Adept, who takes another shot to be saved here by Drew. Yeah, and with that setup being allowed on the side of George Mason, that's going to be the Saints forced to play defensively. Bob Harzi is going to be able to get a nice save. And in the meantime, that's going to allow Ben to go for a nice, even better one. True, slowly tapping that one in. It's going to be a great save coming up from Harzi. Ben trying to follow up off of that one. True, passing it back up, keeping this ball going, keeping this offense alive. Adapt and Parsi working in tandem to get this ball out of the orange zone into the blue. Now it's stuck in the corner. We're going to hope to see some kind of follow up here. Jason bouncing this one off the wall. Ben chasing it down. Fatal getting it out back to orange side. Yeah, Saints getting at least out of their own zone, but not necessarily finding the offensive opportunities that they would be looking for. You could see the ideas are there. That was a centering attempt. To there, but just could not quite get the job done. Stepped over the Parsi, is actually gonna get intercepted here. True up to the skies, drops it down, it's on the crease. It is sitting there teed up and good to go, but nobody on the side of the Saints could finish it this time by. Parsi gonna try to clear, not quite gonna be able to get it out. It is passed back to Adept, but an awkward demo there from Ben in the corner. F leaves it wide open here for Fatal to tie this thing up at one. Beautifully done, Saints, when they really try and get their act together, it is really hard to deal with the things that they have in store. Unfortunately, George Mason, they weren't able to handle that offensive pressure, but still, luckily for them, it's tied one to one. There's still a lot of life left in this game. They are going to have to try to make sure that uh -oh. they can channel <laughs> that momentum they had at the start and see if they can break through what the Saints have in store. I mean, they almost did right then and they are <laughs> off the face, off, just going directly towards the, the nets, but did get pushed aside in the end here. Jason trying to hustle down here is fatal along the right-hand side. I like to make a solo play towards the crease. Ends up getting bounced back to Ben. No boost really in the tank to really continue that play though. So it's going to be up to True in the midfield. To try and deal with all three of these members. Does stall a lot of time, allow for the Saints to get some boost. As it's now Adept and Parzi to try and make the play. But Ben once again picking up where he left off here. A little bit of a juke, but not quite going to be able to get that final touch. As it is going to be cleared away. Adept with control, full boost in the tank. True with a little bit of a block. Not quite going to be able to stop. But now finally, Ben going to be able to knock this one up, but still, loose ball in the Saints crease. Yeah, true. It's going to steal that one out from his teammate. Hopefully that was coordinated in any case. Just a mere handoff. <laughs> a nice little pass, I'll call it. Fatal now, stealing out oh! Jason, but a nice demo, and that's almost a shot on the net. Parsi's going to be able to stop one from rolling in. Parsi now taking this down from the ceiling straight towards blue side. That's a dangerous shot if True wasn't there to stop it. Going to go nice. right over Jason's head and take that straight into the net. That's 2-1 now for St. Clair Academy over George Mason. That's an incredible play. Absolutely love to see it there. Just had the one-on-one, -on -one, and it's an absolute nightmare scenario for the goalie because it's just a case of who moves first. In that case there, goalie moved first, and it's just a matter of reacting to it and had lots of time between them and the net to get the job done as well. Saints take the lead here in game number one. Hang on just a little bit longer. That'd be a fantastic start to the series, but we do see Jason off to adapt. It does have a mid-air collision between two players, but it did not include the ball. So it's going to be cleared this time by Jason now. Over to Parsi. No, Ben is already way up there off the backboard, passing it down the Fatal. Fatal on target is going to barely hit the post. True, though, rebound. But another big save there from Parsi to keep this one within one. This is looking like an elegant dance of ballerinas. If they had wheels instead of uh, tippy-toe shoes, and they are working so well together on both teams in terms of the offensive and defensive pressure and pressure alleviation. Ben, you see him cradling this ball, which was turned from a shot into a clear from him just with his mechanical play alone. Hopefully, he seems to be able to capitalize. Fatal stealing that one up from Jason as it goes into the corners. One minute remaining. We're seeing these teams start to feel oh. the pressure as True takes the pass. 
from center field and turns that into a clean shot on the net. 3-1 now for the Saints, and it's looking like they might have this game under wraps. I mean, good on Ben there to get there first and kind of acknowledge, you take the shot right there, the defender could probably knock it away. So put it a little bit wide for your teammate to follow up on, and sure enough, that is going to be the two-goal lead. Obviously not impossible here for George Mason University's academy squad, as we do see a fantastic play, Ooh. actually. What a passing play in the sky. It's got a little bit of crossbar action in there as well. That's going to put it within one once again. Continually in Rock League, I, I learned the lesson that it is very easy to speak too soon as we're yeah, seeing that's George thing. Mason three seconds in getting a nice goal. And uh, wow, looks like they are really figuring out how they can break through the scenes offense, or defense rather, and Parsi going for another shot here. Oh, good block. Looks like he's going to get through the Saints defense. Ooh. Thankfully, they are able to recover, get the save, but this pressure is not stopping yet. Ben trying to get the steal, not going to get a clear, however. Fatal trying to alleviate and rectify that mistake, but Parsi going to catch that interception, turning that from a clear into another shot attempt, lining it up, but a nice demo play is going to come through for Shrew to ensure that that's not going to happen. They're on orange side now. Ben and Parzi in a little bit of a kerfuffle, trying to steal that one back to blue side, but he's going to get intercepted. Ben once again cradling this ball. It's going to get stolen out of the air from Jason Fatal, trying to meet that ball on the left side. Adapt, spinning oh. forward straight to blue side, but thankfully Chu was there to get the save, and that's going to be the game. As soon as the ball hits the ground, Saints taking game one over George Mason Academy, and you can see them there, focused, ready, excited, <laughs> and uh, enjoying the game day. Hey, there we go, but don't get it too cocky. Okay, my friend, that was still a very, very close game. But you guys see that they're uh, excited to confirm, at least some of them. I mean, I know I know Ben's just like, hey, this is another day at the office. I've been on the stream how many times at this point? <laughs> but for Fatal and uh, and True, it's, this was definitely, I believe, at least a first time, if not a first time in a while. So mm -hmm. they're definitely uh, making the most of it. Absolutely love to see it. But honestly, good on George Mason University, though, as well, to keep that one within range. It is very easy to have to slip away and then it just gets kind of snowballed on top of immediately after the fact. Mm -hmm. I had mentioned that it's uh, very, very easy to uh, <laughs> speak too soon of sorts, but what, you, you haven't used a commentator's curse to uh, <laughs> add on a little extra content? <laughs> I, will not, uh, I will not acknowledge those claims for <laughs> the sake of my integrity, but here we have True trying to turn this oh! one match into a more exciting one, trying to get a goal right off the bat. Fatal going for another one, following oh. his own shot, unfortunately. Gonna miss the mark just a bit. Ben now riding the wall. Fatal passing this from center straight towards the net. No follow up just yet. Waiting for it to get into a good position. True is gonna be able to catch that one, but wow. as it gets bounced back, not able to meet it in the air twice. Jason with a beautiful save, trying to clear it. Saints stopping it and turning wow. that into a shot. True finding one right away pretty early on in this game. Now say it time and time again. Sure, you might be able to save the first shot. You may be able to save the second, but there eventually becomes a time where it gets too overwhelming and all of the Saints getting involved, bouncing it off the backboard, do whatever you have to do, get all of the George Mason University players jumping at the ball, getting out of position, could not make a move. Eventually you run out of gas, you run out of boost, and you are caught. And sure enough, that is going to mean Saints take a nice lead here and start things off here in game number two. Yeah, it's... Uh it's, it's just a matter of a war of attrition when it comes to those in that place. It's, it comes down to, are you able to stop the seventh shot in a row? Even the best players in the world. I don't care how good of a goalie you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous if you can pull that off. And it looks like George Mason, they want to get their turn on the aggressive side. Unfortunately, oh Fatal out of boost. Not much left in the tank. Not much you can really do, but True able to catch that ball and try to find his way in. And they're going to get into a nice collision as he tries to shoot that one. Ben taking this nice calm ball and turning it into a ferocious flyer towards the net. True meeting this one in the air as it flies to blue side. Ben steering it towards the net. True on the oh. ground just taking it from a simple rebound off of the crossbar into a nice classic shot. Couldn't ask for anything cleaner, better, and unfortunately George Mason's defense wasn't quite there. Fantastic job for Ben as well to be able to uh, 
determined not to actually go for the second touch on the ball, instead just charge the player, allowing that ball to hit that backboard and come on down. Nice dead center, teed up and good to go to be able to just knock that in pretty well without hesitation. But also good job there on the shooter there for St. Clair that jumped early because there was a defender of GMU in hot pursuit ready to go for the demo by jumping a tiny bit earlier than maybe you would have wanted to. Dodges player, gets the goal. Yeah, beautifully done. And now you can see George Mason kind of lifting the weights off, but maybe a little too early as Parsi is going to be able to get there just in time to get that save. Parsi now trying to play on his offense. Fatal going for the shot. Jason catching that one. Benning from going in, but Fatal off the rebound, setting up for another shot from a teammate. Ben in position, doing the same thing Fatal just did, setting this one up for a teammate, oh. but they're going to get the save, swatting that into the corner. Adapt now, fighting for the boost, not going to be able to find it. Parsi doing the same, getting a clear, and Shrew just going to get a nice, simple save, allowing the team to get in position. Uh-oh! Uh -oh. He is stealing this one away. Not a lot of boost, oh. but he's got the flip oh. to send this one flying into the net, top right corner. Fortunately, George Mason Academy, it seems like they might be having some communication issues, maybe, because this net is being left wide open one too many times, and it feels like three in a row. Honestly, the first one wasn't really a defense gap, but the second, third, I feel like they just weren't there. I mean, you're saying communication issues, but I saw a perfect passing play there. Granted, it was to the wrong team, but I mean, <laughs> um, he had definitely a little bit of regrouping to have to do here for GMU. In a worst case scenario for them, of course, thank goodness it is best of five to kind of get back on to the swing of things. Because sure. You can see how I was kind of talking about uh, the game kind of running away from you with a little bit of snowballing. This seems to be what's happening to GMU Academy, unless they can get something kickstarted here. Yeah, and I think they are finding it. What I really respect and admire about most teams, I think it's what separates some of the better from some of the worst teams, is the resilience. It, it sounds cheesy, it sounds corny, but can you get back up after being pushed on the ground? And George Mason absolutely can because I mentioned that I felt like they might be having a little too much offense, not a lot of defense, but look at them. They're still out there swinging, looking for these goals, and I feel like that might be a little bit more of a strategic thing at this point because they want to oh. see what they can do, figure out the Saints' offense and their defense while they still have time, and hopefully they can go into game three with everything figured out. Absolutely, and I mean, if they can break one in here, trying to find two goals in under a minute could be doable. They can just get one and quick, and I mean, they're going to dump it on in, try to make something happen. Jason over to Parzi. Parzi has a little bit of the tank, but not enough to actually get there. Now, Saints once again, here's one out, and honestly, that's all they have to do. Kind of not to um, put on the brakes or lessen off the throttle, but just find yourself into some little more conservative positioning. Don't have to necessarily have three people diving towards the ball unless you just absolutely uh, want to put a look at an all chat. Wow. And get opportunities like that where Ben is going to be able to find the fourth goal here for the Saints. Yeah, that was just uh, a little bit of an unexpected one. See, that was basically a clear attempt coming oh. out, but he kind of chipped that through, and before it could reach um, the member of a George Mason that was sitting center, he was able to clip that, turn that from an interception into a shot. Really well done. But like I mentioned before, George Mason Universe, uh, George Mason Academy, rather, they are potentially just trying to feel out the Saints, see what they can get understood. At this point, yeah. yeah just uh, figure out the Saints' patterns and experiment, see what they can get done. And you can see them already finding a little bit of success, almost getting the goal there. With 30 seconds on the clock, what more data can they gather before they go into game? Yeah, at this point, this is the, the point of the game where I say, I uh, just the goal is just don't get skunked. Try to get one and get the goose egg off the, the board right here. But Ben is going to try and make sure that, that is absolutely secured. Maybe get another one to pad the stats here off. The Fatal, fantastic little Ooh, lob shot, actually. Wow. Going to secure Fatal's first goal here of this game. It wasn't a fast one. Didn't have to be. Not at all. We take any kind of simple goal we can get. You see Jason kind of completely caught off guard by the way that one lobbed. Just a slow arc towards the corner. Yeah. And uh, kind of flipped in a way that wasn't really going to accommodate a shot like that. Ten seconds on the board. George Mason Academy thoroughly dusting themselves off, getting everything they need out of their systems and off of their clothing so they can go into the next game nice and clean cut, hopefully confident that they can take at least one game off of the Saints. But this one looks to be under wraps this ball. Its destination is the floor, but the Saints are looking to be like a traffic jam, preventing it from reaching theirs. <laughs> but it's going to find its way eventually, and that's going to be game two under wraps. Once again, you can see the Saints and their coach. <laughs> 
looking pretty comfortable on the stage. Join the time. <laughs> Absolutely. And honestly, when you're winning like this, definitely a, a good time all around. But this is also where I've seen many teams find themselves in a trap. Yeah. We've seen many times during Rocket League where you come off of 5-0, 7-0, or like a massive goal lead. Or goal lead. What, what am I talking about? Goal lead. <laughs> Too many esports, but uh, <laughs> a lot to keep in, track of in uh, in these games, and then immediately the other team comes swinging back and three O's you. Yeah, and then all of a sudden three two. It's like wait a minute, we were absolutely dominating. Now this is a game five. I feel like George Mason University absolutely has that potential. Mm -hmm. um, will we see it? I don't know necessarily because I'm not gonna lie, these have been some pretty mellow games. But if the download is the plan, I sure hope it's complete and that their internet's pretty good because uh, <laughs> they need to start uh, using that thing uh, right here right now. The thing is, we've seen George Mason get really close a couple of times already in terms mm -hmm. of those goals, especially in game one and two. Game one, uh, we saw them actually leading for quite a bit before the scenes kind of came back. Game two, we saw them kind of get really close to that shot. But as we head into game three, let's see if they can find the amalgamation of all of those previous ones and turn this into something special. As we see the kickoff go underway. Fatal trying to turn this to point side. Pass from Jason to adapt. Going towards net shoot. Takes this one down. Shines on a flying car. Is he going to intercept? Not going to have any success with it, though. Gets into the air, bent, ready for it on the ground. Looking oh. forward, off the, oh, the corner, but oh my god, <laughs> Fatal was already there, ready for the shot. Beautifully done, beautifully executed. We're seeing the St. Clair Academy once again leading 20 seconds into this game. I feel like that's a favorite time. I mean, that's a classic play there from Ben that we've seen him do time and time again. Finding that spot between carrying the ball and going after the player and immediately punting the goalie right out of the way, take them right out of the play, allowing Fatal to just make sure gets in the right position to finish that one off. And that is the exact kind of message that the Saints want to go off the start, but wow. Adams, though, is going to at least get George Mason right back into this one after a quick passing play. Yeah, beautifully done. They were able to just take all of what they learned in those first two games and at least find a chance to put one on the board. And I think the way that was executed wasn't frantic. It didn't seem accidental. It seemed very, very determined and planned. And those are the types of goals you want to see at this point in the series because it means that you're not at wit's end. You still have your game plan. You still, still are able to execute and coordinate. And if you are able to do that, then you still definitely can take the game, maybe even take the entire series. Yeah, the moment that a team kind of starts losing trust and you start seeing that more and more players are just starting to do solo plays, mm -hmm. that's kind of over when you know that it's over. Ooh. But when you start seeing passing plays like this, you know it damn well ain't over. Fantastic play there from the Saints. Yeah, wow. I'm kind of left speechless here. Fatal going for the fake. Didn't touch it. Bumped it back to Ben. And he goes for the corner shot. Unfortunately, Adapt kind of read that. But still, just milliseconds too late to get the reaction in time. To have the car in place to get the save. Saints are now once again leading 2-1 to one over George Mason Academy. And I don't think they have any oh. chance of stopping anytime soon. As you can already see some shots <laughs> flying through. Through two shots in a row, both of them really close to flying in like a laser beam, and we're already back on the defense. Fatal intercepting the, the chase down towards Blue Net, and they just aren't able to get past that line. It feels like the Saints are so ready and taking this one down. True, Ben going for a shot. Oh, and, oh, it's like he parted the Red Sea, the Orange Sea this time around. George Mason just went aside as he cruised in. Look at that. They all just dispersed as the ball flew in. So unfortunate the time again. Maybe miscommunication on who's going to have that one, but weren't able to make that work. Ben had all the time in the world. That ball was sitting perfectly on the hood of the George Mason Academy's player's car. Could have picked out, like, took your time, get your best driver, and just smash that thing as far into the net as you wanted to because it does not get any more dead center than that. But a fantastic uh, just play to capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. And you can see GMU definitely not f too flustered here. They did get some shots pretty quickly after that face off, and the pressure is still there. So, still coming out swinging. Not necessarily too shook as of this moment, but 
The saves are there. Another Ooh. one there from Ben, but it's going to go right on Ooh, through. Wow. Nicely done. A slow-moving passing play there for GMU to bring this back within one. Okay, I will admit, this one looked a little bit more frantic than the last one, but it still worked out. They were able to coordinate. We got that shot. Demo allowed a little bit less defensive uh, capabilities on the side of the Saints. And then the shot rebound ended up going towards Jason and passing it right back into the net. It was a little messy, but it worked. And again, still shows that they have the wherewithal to make things happen. And you were seeing them try it once again. Nice bump from Parzi. Adapt, looking to turn this into a shot. Not going to find it, however, Ben taking this one over to Orange. Parzi knocking it down. Fatal nearby. Ben coming down with a vengeance and swiping it away. Not able to get too far, but Fatal now bouncing it up. Ben, True, and Fatal all in proximity of the ball. True now sealing us away from Adapt. Jason coming back for more. Oh, geez. Ben taking this one out of the skies towards the ground. Fatal trying to steer it away, but Adapt taking it out once again. Looks like George Mason's just one step ahead in these exchanges so far. And True, last second, taking this out of Parsi's hands. Back to Orange. Jason trying to get it. True is not going to have his chance with the ball. And Fatal looking for a shot once again. Oh, and my. in the area, going for it, finds it, unfortunately. They weren't able to readjust the defense. And yeah, like you said, it's a hat trick going on in this game. There we go. Welcome back to the stream here, uh, Ben, as we are going to see that one. Just get barely crawled in. Last two goals again, just scrappy, but but scrappy is okay as long as your positioning's on point. And both teams able to make it work, but Saints gonna make it work to get that extra little bit of insurance as we just cross that halfway point here into this one. Jason in the orange zone now. Gonna try and pass off to a depth, but that was extremely slow. Fatal had a lot of time to intercept that. It does in fact do so, but it does now mean that Parsi gets the opportunity to bring it into the St. Clair zone. Ben going to clear it pretty well immediately. Fatal is there on the immediate pressure. Oh, wow. Actually might beat them out, but no, it is going to end up getting pushed aside here by Jason. A little bit of scrappiness once again here as we approach about a minute 30 left in this one. That almost was a really good setup accidental pass from the Saints, but fortunately no one's able to follow it up. But Ben taking that all the way from blue, it felt like. And and it quite literally was. Yeah, true passing it down to him. And there he is tipping it through. No one able to intercept him from the air. They were all Jeez. on the ground there. Ben carries this one in. That's a touchdown, basically. This isn't soccer anymore with the way that he kind of made that goal happen. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a form of football, depending on where you're from. But as it once again, right off the face off, right off the rip, we got another shot. Going to barely go wide here. Anything here for Sinclair Academy is just extra insurance, extra relaxation points of sorts. We now see Fatal off the true fantastic pass, but a very, very awkward angle above the crossbar. Could not knock that one down. Jason does have players here alongside him here from GMU. Going to end up going towards the Saints crease. Fatal and True are both there. A little bit of a external teammate contact here to play around, but with so much time left on the clock, I do not feel much pressure here. Um, against our Saints, if anything, all on GMU to try and make something happen. But we're just dancing in the crease here. Ben looking for goal five at this point. Yeah, Ben, and I don't blame him, you know. You really want to show what you're made of, and especially when you finally get to be on stream, you take any chance you can get to make a statement. And this is a statement being made right now with 30 seconds remaining for this game. Most likely need this end unless George Mason's able to get three in this very short time span. But once again, short time spans in Rocket League can can pass by in what feels like eternities based off how things go. But with Ben in possession of the ball, still maintaining it after Jason tried to take it away from him, Parzi finally going to stop that play coming through. But with five seconds remaining, they can oh, only good. hope, but fatal, not even going to allow them to get that one more shot in as this game comes to a close. It's going to be a nice clean 3-0 from the St. Clair Academy squad against George Mason Academy. But it was a beautiful showing nonetheless, and I don't think the scoreline really reflects how this game went. I was just about to say, the scoreline's not going to do it justice in regards to GMU's skill level, because we do see many of like really, really solid opportunities and great plays, and yeah, sure enough, yeah, the, the game's done, the final score is there by all means, it is time to <laughs> pull it out, and sure enough, um, Saints very, very confident, very, very excited to have such a fantastic debut on stream to say the least but yeah, yeah. Jim you had plenty of passing opportunities you could tell the skill ceiling is there but just the overall I guess average consistent play there of the St. Clair Saints Academy squad was just 
that much higher today to make it so that, yes, their plays were solid, but the mm -hmm. defense was just too strong. I can see why in Varsity Plus they are as high as they are mm -hmm. because I can see a, a spot where they are absolutely crushing other schools that are either with like second teams or kind of just getting started. Mm -hmm. And the, to be to be feared still, like we were saying before, granted just our – Saints are just that cracked. Yeah, and I like you mentioned, I could see how their play style suits and allows them to be at the top of Varsity Plus with their aggressive play style on the side of George Mason. Um, I could see how they could really quickly overwhelm some of the other schools in the division. But unfortunately for them, and fortunately for us, the Saints defense was really there today. And of course, their offense as well. You know, we saw Ben get the hat trick in that last game. Hat trick plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Saints were really on fire. And I'm um, I'm very excited to see what this team has in store for us for the rest of the semester. Absolutely. And if honestly, if games keep lining up like this, where there's one at seven and one at eight thirty, maybe it's a, it's time to bring some more Rocket League doubleheaders in. We'll definitely have to see if the schedule allows for that. But speaking of scheduling, so one thing that's kind of messed up here for this week is that the uh, normal Rocket League game that happens usually at eight thirty, <laughs> it kind of got pushed back to nine thirty. So we with this game going as quick as it did. We kind of have a pretty significant break. So in the meantime, I think we're going to throw to a break. But during the break, we are going to throw up a couple of VODs from some of the CRL Open qualifiers that we've had throughout the last uh, week and a half or, so, or two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Just until we get a little bit closer to game time. And then it'll be eventually game time for St. Clair Saints Green versus LCU, which I believe is currently one of the top dogs in that group as well. Ooh. And with it being the uh, the Varsity Premier Super Conference, I don't think that's going to be a matchup you're going to want to miss. So bear with us. Enjoy some of the, uh, the reruns matches in the meantime. But we will be back in just a little bit with our next matchup.